yeah, our deal was similar. I mean, there, were, there were no no no, no mindset attached. It was based on trust, basically. We, we trusted that their stock was worth that and was going to, and the plan that that, that John presented, we trusted it could be accomplished. And uh, they really trusted that we would be around here pushing everything. And it's more about the incentives and not so much on the, on the penalties. Uh, we will have the discussion if we're for for Bola, the soccer game was pre revenue when we were discussing this. If we were going to be tying in to success or whatever, and we didn't. We didn't because we didn't, again we, we didn't want to have something that that, that brought encounter in, in incentives in, in some way. Right? Like pushing revenue, I mean waiting for revenue to happen versus we, we wanted to keep business run as as, as, as usual. Um, and, and again and seeing how we could leverage from each other. Right? Even though we, we we report to them, we, we're going to be autonomous, uh, and, and they want us to be empowered because, again, it's a startup and, and, and they need us to do that. Even though it's a 300 person company and uh, it's, it's still a young company, and they need us to, to, to intrapreneur all, the, all this thing. I, I had something in my mind from, from your last thing about. I hope you aren't going to disagree with me again. No, no, no. no. <laughs> On top of that, okay. which is basically, uh, you mentioned something about. Uh, well, well, Playing by the rules and playing and doing a, a good company as as as, as broad the future of good is very important from the beginning because for example something that they were really insisting on were, were all the reps and warrants right and and they were very insisting and insisting and I, I knew that I could sign whichever rep and warrant because I mean the, of course there's potential risk but I mean none of the things that we've done in the past were really concerns for us because we 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 we, we were trustworthy that we had done operations. Legally and 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 so we, if not I mean, I, I, right now we'll be like uh, nervous. And, uh, did they discover that or whatever? It's 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 not the way to go uh, because again more in a company when it's it's all intangibles and software and people and all the legal problems the, the labor problems that come from that there, there's gonna be a lot of concern in, in the reps and warrants piece or IP and all that. So we we, we did a good job of that. So now easy. Talk about the in read. I have uh, one or two, you know, last questions. Um, one thing that got a lot of attention, well, I guess in Latin America generally, one of the barriers to investments in is the relative, you know, uh, lack of, of credible exits. Brazil, I think, has sort of turned that on its head in the last four or five years, and is obviously, you know, that's why it's getting, you know, forty-five percent of the investments in. Um, Brazil is, I think, the only market in Latin America where you've seen IPOs potentially as a credible exit, something you see is in the United States. I don't know, Beto and Simon, Quig and Milo Cab, if you think that's a I would think trend. I, I really have to run in like two minutes, okay. but I, I guess one important thing that I would say, and it's another great, great question. Unfortunately, a lot of those IPOs weren't venture back. So it's not a ratification in the eyes of the limited partner investors who are actually putting their capital behind the venture capital firms. It's not a validation of the Brazilian venture capital market because those IPOs you know, were backed by wealthy families or by other things, they weren't venture backed. So, um, so that's one thing. The other thing is the big success that people can point to now was the sale of uh, Busca Pay for $342 million dollars. To, to masters, okay? But that was an overnight success, as we say in English, that was 10 years in the making, okay? So, so the jury is still out, as we say in English, it hasn't been decided definitively yet whether venture capital in emerging markets, particularly in Brazil, actually meets the prerequisites of the US uh, model. So, so, so even though things are great and we have a wonderful liquidity environment, We've got all these great IPOs. We've got all these private equity firms who are going to be great buyers for a lot of these companies, you know, financial buyers, um, and a huge wave of M and A from strategic buyers. So the exit environment is phenomenal. It's still not a ratification of the model of venture capital in Brazil, which at the end is something that comes back to hurt the entrepreneurs because if the funds can't raise money uh, by showing the LPs that they have a you know success of the model then the LPs won't invest in the funds, and then without money from the LPs, you can't do the whole thing. I, I, I actually tend to disagree with that, Simon, because <coughs> I've seen um, 
I can give you three examples of IPOs on venture-backed companies. Uh, one of them is DASA, which is a lab diagnostics company that uh, got an initial investment um, you know, probably eight years ago and went through several of those phases and today is a you know, probably billion and a half listed company. The other is Odontobre, you know, it was an original seven million how investment, and that IPO for, I think, 400 million highs. Um, third case is um, a company uh, who used to be a call center, uh, and which I looked at in, in 99, and that uh, IPO uh, recently, it's called Tivit, and it, it, it's also worth around a billion. So these, and. I, I recognize you weren't in Brazil in those days, so maybe you didn't even know that these deals well, happened but, so early. Yeah, but yeah, no, but they did happen earlier, and so it's sort of not, when you're pitching the LPs, mm -hmm. they're just not, they're not as old. I didn't, I, I, the only deal that I've heard people talk about is the Luka Tech, yeah. but the VCs had left so long ago uh -huh. that it wasn't really a, a, it's not really, it doesn't really count, uh -huh. you know? So, okay. so anyways, so I, I understand what you're saying. I, so I think that um, the, but I would, I, I would. Wanna, by the way, if you want to talk to LPs for me, you're more than uh, welcome. Okay. Um, but I think that, no, I, I recently gave a presentation on venture capital and private equity in Brazil, so that's why I have, and I, and I in my research, I asked the guys who work with me to uh, give me like 10 examples, mm -hmm. and these three companies I knew, so I called the investors, they gave me all the information. I mean, I knew, I had a lot of information, but I put that into the presentation in an organized fashion. That's why those numbers are so clear. But but I would say that for anybody who is an entrepreneur or anybody who is an investor, uh, you should not look at uh, the capital markets or the IPO market as uh, your exit, you know, strategy. It should always be. I'm gonna help build a company that is so good that other people are gonna come and try to buy. And if by chance the markets are open, I'll do an IPO. But for those who just target an IPO, I can say that most of the times uh, they're wrong and you know they don't do so well. So you have to build a company that others wants to buy. Uh, and, uh, that'll be an easier exit. Something that's it's interesting and, and building on top of Raoul's comments, in the last panel is, uh, it's, it's our job, again, Brazilians, Argentinians, Chileans, whatever, to build great companies, build companies that, 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 that reach venture beats or whichever publication in, in the US, and there are lots of them, right? I mean, small deals, big deals, uh, the next Twitter, right? It's, it's all about building great companies that make, provide meaning to the world or, or solve problems, and, and that are designed to be high growth companies, high impact companies, and that's why, why, why we're here, right? Um, but it's, I mean, the, 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 the money thing comes in, it's, it's learning, I think that the MCP program would, would be great for, for all of you in, in learning the, the ABCs of this and, and hooking up with the right people. But focus on creating great companies, fo focusing on, on telling the stories as well. Something that, that I'm, I'm, I'm very fond of in the, in the next few years is, is telling about our, 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 our small story, right? Because our small story will bring inspiration to others that will bring the other one and, and probably the next Twitter, Facebook, whatever you call it, I mean hopefully it will come from Brazil, Argentina, whatever it is. And and, and that's our job.